Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, today we've got another gate. Another gate with a radius top on it. Now this one's not going to be too big. It's only about four feet wide, about 30 inches tall. Uh, but what is unique about this is all the different uh, uh, designs that I'm going to have within this gate. You can see that I've got these twisted pieces of metal right here. I've got four or five of those. I've got some of these knuckles right here. You've seen a lot of those in the gates that I've done. And then we've also got some curly Q type of uh, uh, designs here uh, that are different, all different sizes and shapes. And these are going to be also going inside of this small little gate right here. Now, I've already made uh, and installed two little side panels that, uh, that the gate is going to be going between. I didn't film that, uh, but uh, I wanted to get those in place and everything nice and square so I could build this gate. So when we're going to put it in, it'll be nice and, and, nice and uh, true and plumb. Uh, one thing I want to point out, I get a lot of people <clears throat> in the comment section ask me where I get all of this ornamental iron stuff. And I get them from a place uh, called uh, King Metals, kingmetals.com. Um, there's four or five of those locations here around the United States and there's one close to me, relatively close, it's about 20 miles away. Uh, but you can order these online uh, and I've done that before and the shipping is usually two day shipping so it's really not that bad. This is not a paid endorsement, they're not a channel sponsor of mine. Uh, it just happens to be a facility that just has anything that you want in regards to building any kind of gates or metal project that you may have. Alright, let's get started with today's video. All right, so I'm getting started by uh, by just building the gate frame itself and putting it together. Even though it's not a very big frame, uh, still the angle's always difficult to find. This is the simplest solution that I found. It's just set them right up on top there, get everything nice and square, make your mark, and then go ahead and cut two equal pieces, and that usually works out pretty good. Okay, so I know I've talked about this before, but uh, I get a lot of people ask me what I use to mark my, my metal with. And for a long time, I used this one right here. Now this is a, this is a Prismacolor, uh, Prismacolor Very Thin, uh, number 753. I hope you can see that okay. Eh, the end's all chewed up because I put these things in my mouth. Uh, now this thing worked really good. The, the thing I didn't like about it is because it's a very thin, the 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 lead is very thin and so it broke very often i mean i had to sharpen these things regularly and then when i went to reorder i found these right here uh this is a prismacolor premier and it's a pc9 let me get a different one here this one's all chewed up here here's this is the way they come out of the box right here uh they got a little sharpened uh end on them uh prismacolor premier uh, PC 949 uh, super thick you can see the difference here let me see you can see the difference in the lead thickness right here I've never had a problem with this one right here uh, these brand new Prismacolor premieres I've never broke a lead yet they're super thick they mark really good uh, they're a little bit more than the other ones I think these are the, these ones right here were about a uh, dollar a piece twelve dollars a dozen I think these are more like 20 but still Nevertheless, you get on Amazon. This is not a paid endorsement. I'm not being, I don't, not sponsored by them. And I, this is just something that I use all the time. I got them on Amazon. If you're interested, you can go there and check them out. Prismacolor Premier. All right, so here's the radius I was talking about in the cuts. You know, uh, the best way, because every radius is different. This is a kind of a small little radius. So I just laid the piece uh, up on top of it and got uh, got it perfectly uh, 90 degrees to the where the gate frame is going to be. And then just put a mark where both pieces intersect. And then that's the angle that I use. And, uh, and I'm just, uh, I couldn't get it in my cutoff saw right here. So I'm having to use my uh, angle grinder right here with a cutoff wheel and that seemed to work the best especially if you if you mark it uh you know all the way around if you can get the thing marked all the way around you have some nice true lines to to go with and then uh, generally that's not really a problem and this material here on the radius is 095 i it's a little bit thicker than the 63 that i'm using for the rest of everything else but uh um i was informed by my metal supply store that uh you know hey, if the thicker you go the better 
uh, bending quality that you have. And if you guys remember, I did a video a while back uh, with the radius that I smashed out the ends on that uh, uh, 063 two inch square tube. But uh, this here is inch and a half and there's hardly any deflection at all uh, on this piece. It actually uh, worked out really well. Now I can finally get over to the cutoff saw. These are the pieces for the, the 45s that I need for the bottom section of the gate. I'll be having to cut three of them, uh, the bottom section plus the two side rails that uh, join in. And that works out pretty good here. Those 45s are nice and clean and true and uh, yeah, it's a, that's a good deal there. And you can see that uh, it makes for a pretty close fit. And, and uh, these are my fireball tools. I've had these for about a month now, and I've been using them on my latest project. And I, I got to say, these things make everything go so much faster and so much smoother. You can just see, you just drop them into place and clamp them, and everything's already at a perfect 45 for you. Uh, there's no uh, guessing with this by any means. Just uh, put everything in there clamp it down and you can start tack welding and that's exactly what i'm doing right here and if i had a four <clears throat> if i had a rectangular piece uh, i'd have all four pieces on there and, and you'd have this thing done in no time but even with the uh with the small little radius you can see that uh, everything just fits right together perfectly it was just a matter of me just holding you know holding it tight and then uh, and tacking it up double checking for measurements right there everything seems to be pretty good I'll remove all the clamps and everything and then flip it over and get to the other side and get some tacks on that side as well. I like to tack everything together as much as I can. Uh, double check. Uh, be sure everything still st stays square and uniform uh, before things get welded out completely. I'm going to start uh, welding it right now. And you can see that uh, sometimes uh, when you're cutting them with the, the cutoff uh, saw and your angle grinder, I should say, um, they're not perfect. You know, there sometimes is a little gap and you've got to get in there and stitch well a little bit, especially with a 6.3 material. It's pretty thin. And uh, sometimes you got to just uh, give it a couple pops uh, to get it uh, welded together. But for the most part, you can see uh, we're moving along here <clears throat> pretty good now. All right, got everything welded. And uh, uh, I like to come back and grind all my wells nice and smooth and flat. It just makes for a really nice look. Um, you know, some people leave their welds on there, and I understand that. And uh, I, I like to grind them down. I've had a couple people say, oh, you're grinding the weld off. It's not going to be strong. Well, I've been doing this for years, and I've never had a failure on a weld yet. Uh, they seem to stay together good. And, well, again, what I like about it is that it's just a good, clean, polished, finished look when it's all done and painted. All right, so now it's time to start putting all the decor in there. And there it is. We talked earlier about this. This is King Architectural Metals, uh, kingmetals.com. Uh, pretty big uh, facility. Uh, they've got four or five all over the United States. And uh, it's just a matter of putting these uh, curly cues in. Uh, there was no design for it. I just got lucky. And when I started placing them in place, yeah, they lined up just the way they lined up, and uh, it worked out really good. I had to make a couple adjustments on a couple of those C circles, but something that you can't really see. Uh, but uh, anyways, they just fit in there just the way they're supposed to. Here's an advantage of saving some of your uh, drop metal. You can see if I got some 5H tubing that I hung on to from a previous project. Just grabbed a handful of those, roughly about three foot long, and that saved me from cutting up a couple pieces of uh, brand new material. Now, this is the way that I assembled these, uh, I don't want to call them twists or curly cues or whatever they may be. Um, I just put them on some 2x4s, uh, lined them up, be sure everything is nice and square, and then just tacked them in place. And once I got them tacked, uh, I just kind of bent them around and banged them around until they, until they look like they're square. And then just went ahead and welded them out. Now here I'm not going to do any grinding on these. The, they seem to weld in there really good. Even though they're cast iron to mild steel, it's always a little bit of a challenge you know, weld, welding cast iron to mild steel. It works, but um, generally there's a lot more splatter involved. But uh, in this case, it's, uh, it's pretty clean. I think I had four of these total in this gate right here. And, uh, you know, I'm just finishing up uh, all four of them right here, the same process. You know, once you do one and figure out how it works, then it's, uh, the others just come that much easier and, easier and faster. 
All right, so we're going to go every other one on those. And then for the others, uh, we're going to just do a square tube right here. With I got one knuckle on this one. And then this is where one of the curlies goes in there, or twists. And then we're going to have two knuckles on the next one. Now, spacing was critical for me. You can just see, again, I, I feel I got really lucky. But there's no other choice for the first one to go right up against the bottom of the, uh, of the S there. And that's about four inches apart. And then I wanted to have them all about four. But... They're off just slightly. Some of them were three and a half, some were three and three quarters. You can see I wanted to get that that right in the middle, right in the center of that C circle up there at the top. And in order to do that, that made my dimension off slightly. But you know, there's so much going on in this gate itself uh, that you couldn't really even tell that there was a difference between four inches and three and a half inches or three and three quarters in some of those pickets. That's just, uh, it just worked out really good. You know, checking for square as you go along is really important. You know, I've done these things sometimes and you get going along and next thing you know, you get towards the end and you're, you're an inch and a half out of square. So double checking the measurements when you get close to the end right there to be sure that your gap uh, is the same. So when you end up, you end up uh, everything looking nice and square. You can make those adjustments with three or four pickets left and it's usually not that noticeable. Right down to the last one right here. Everything is looking pretty good. And there it is. So now that I got everything in place, it's just these knuckles right here, uh, spacing them out. I just used a little wood spacer. Um, I think this was about five and a half inches uh, up off the bottom right here and just went along and just tacked those all in place. And then I just freehand measured uh, these three here on the top uh, to get them in place. And just a little tack on air, everything is going to hold everything in place. And I just want to double check and be sure everything is good. And uh, square, this is a funny little deal. <clears throat> My camera's on wheels, and I grabbed it to move it to the front. When I saw that it was just kind of rolling around, I wanted to just go with it. Eh, something different. Whatever. All right, just going to button up the top little tacks right here. You know, now it's time to start welding everything together. Now I know everything is fitting where it's supposed to be fitting and nothing's going to move around. Now, even that's a small little gate, there still is a lot of welding involved in a small little gate for, because of all the detail that's in it. So just top and bottom all the way around on the pickets right here. And uh, while I'm doing that, of course, I'm going to hit every other piece there is I can, I can possibly get on that side right there. You know, this is the beauty about doing, I, I love doing smaller projects like this because, yeah, as you can see, it just fits on my welding table. It is the right height. Everything is good. It's, it's easy to work with. There's not too much bending down. And for me, you know, hey, the easier it gets, the better it is for me. That's for sure. I just went along here and started at the top and just welded every every possible connection I could possibly see. And I'm not saying that that's what you need to do, uh, but that's what I just did as I was going along. And it just seemed to work out uh, pretty good. Definitely don't want things coming apart. Well, there it is. I got the hinges on it. got some prime and paint on it. And it was a great little project for me. A lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and check out my website at jimbosgarage.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more videos. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.